So I get a lot of requests on how you can improve your performance of your caliber. And we've gotten a lot of requests on how to boost your FPS, make it fire more reliably, more accurately, um, and higher power. We get a lot of emails and we've decided to show you in person just some things that you can do to increase your performance up to that 300 FPS range. Uh, there's a lot of content out there like Bradley Phillips and other people who will share their builds or the things that they've done uh, to hit that 300 FPS mark. So we're going to show you some things that are available on our site and our store that you can get um, and tinker with your blaster to get similar performance. What people request for the most and they see the best performance from, and you see a lot of this out there is a brass barrel. This is an 18 inch brass barrel. So brass can give you the best performance. If you do the math and compare it to a 495 or 509, it's actually a little bit bigger than a 495. However, the greater performance comes through the amazing consistency in these brass tubing. These tubings are used by hobbyists who build aircraft and other precision things in their hobbies. I'm not quite sure what they actually use it for. But the wall thickness is 14 thousandths of an inch, 0.014, and it's amazingly consistent all the way through. So consistent that uh, nerfers in the past, and they still do this today, make sealed breaches just by putting one size over the other size and it's like an air glide friction fit. So if, you, uh, if you're familiar with an, like an air table, an air hockey table, that air provides like a little layer of friction and that kind of happens in here. The wall thicknesses are so close together that it'll glide across each other. For example, this will just slide in and it's like a, even though it doesn't have an O-ring on it, you can still get just from that that overlap, you can just get a, you get a really good air seal. Um, the problem with brass though, is it gives you really good performance. This is an 18 inch brass barrel, so you can easily hit close to 300 FPS by using this and getting your air seal optimized. However, the problem with brass is it is a very soft metal. It's even more soft than aluminum um, and copper. So if you drop it, it'll ding up your barrel. It'll get dense in it really easy. And if you drop, say, where you need to have the air seal at, where your ram would go into, it can really damage your performance. And if you um, play outdoors very often and you're aggressive, um, you could end up you know, getting a lot of dirt on your dart. So if you just pick up a dart that has some dirt on it and you load it through, that can actually scrape up the inside of your barrel, wearing it out quicker. Also, if you're playing close quarters or you like to move more when you're playing, you risk the chance of like a longer barrel hitting into something and just bending your barrel entirely. A lot of people will just end up breaking their brass barrels because they're not the most durable in the world. So I personally prefer to run with an aluminum barrel because they're cheaper to replace, they're less picky on their dart fit, and they're easier to maintain. And you, ha you don't have to be as careful with them. The brass, similar to a 495, has a really tight fit. So your dart, if it has a wide head, you cannot use brass. If your dart it has um, a head wider than the foam body, it'll often get jammed because the rubber will create too much friction on the brass and get stuck in the barrel. Another problem that you can have is if you're loading very quickly and you slam a dart in there, it's a tight fit. So if you're loading a dart and it's crooked at all or you're using um, a really fast load, if it's not straight in there, you can actually pinch your dart and end up squishing it. Some people call dart chew. It can chew up your darts or cut your darts. So you can have to be more deliberate in your loading. So if you're rapid firing, brass is definitely the worst option for you unless you have an insanely accurate system and it's very well maintained. Another problem with brass is it's so tight that a full length dart, this is a half length dart, a full length dart will be about twice as long. So you've got twice as much surface area causing a lot more potential friction in it. So if you're trying to ram rod into the brass, you're gonna be trying to push a dart that's a tight fit with the bot, the back of the foam. And so you'll have the dart can sometimes get too much friction and then it'll buckle on the end of it and your dart will end up being squished. So that's a bigger problem with full length darts because they have a lot more friction. Uh, you don't have a problem as much with half length darts at all. Um, if you are having problems with that in your own breach and you have a pusher setup, you may want to switch to a sleeper brass setup or an angel breach or other things that people call them these days, where it basically chambers the dart with brass rather than pushing it into the brass, it gets kind of chambered. So it's a, a different setup for a different day we can talk about. But if you want the best performance with a brass barrel, for example, Bradley Phillips 
will have brass barrels on most of his builds and he can achieve very high performance. It's a very smooth bore. And if you're um, really intense, like Chris Cartea, you could actually lubricate the inside of your barrel, add a little bit of coating to it to decrease the friction even further. And that's where you can get even more performance. But if you're shooting for 300 FPS or just a high 200s, there's a lot of easier ways than trying to polish the inside of a tube. So we've talked about the different barrel options. The brass barrel itself, because it is actually a smaller size than all the aluminum barrels at 17 30 seconds, you can't use the same muzzle devices and scars and barrels as you would as a normal 5 8 barrel. So 5 8 is about 16 millimeter for your scars. For 17 30 seconds, you have to get a scar that's made to fit 17 30 seconds brass. And there's another problem if you're making your barrel um, have a 19 or a 9 30 seconds then you have to get a whole nother size as well. So uh, the problem with it is the Caliber and Town Claw and similar platforms will usually be built around a 5.8 barrel. However, with this thinner barrel, you're not going to be able to mount it in the same system because the diameters are different. And the way that these are mounted in the newest version of the Town Claw and Caliber is just one screw that's tightened up against the barrel. So if you tighten it up against your barrel, you're going to be driving a screw straight into your barrel at one point. It's just one screw from the bottom. Some, uh, like the U-Series has two screws, one in the magwell, one in the, in the muzzle, but that's just putting a clamping force in one spot on your barrel. And brass is so soft, if you try that, you will end up deforming your brass. And so what we've done is we've gone back to an older style muzzle. Here is a caliber muzzle that's made for brass. The hole is just made smaller and it uses the plastic piece of the print as a clamp. So instead of driving a screw, which is a hard steel metal into your brass, you're actually just squeezing it and having that plastic wrap around the brass, more distributed force, and it distributes the pressure evenly. So it has a much less chance of squishing your brass. And so it's just as a nice push fit in the barrel. And then you just put a screw in that hole and it holds it nice and tight. And if you get a good fit on there, that's all you need to hold your barrel in. Um, because it's printed, 3D printed, and it's just plastic, it is possible, especially if you're playing in extreme weather, that you can wear out this piece or just lose its attention over time, just like any clamp. But you can actually uh, wrap just some tape around your barrel to make it fit better. And most people, after they get their barrel set up, set right, perfect, they like it, they'll actually just super glue it in place because they're not going to have to change it. And if they do change it, they're going to change it to something pretty uh, specific. And so having more than one muzzle is not a problem for those types of people. Um, but if you're looking to do quick changes or experiment around, you can just put a screw in it and it'll hold on for a good amount of time before wearing out. The other thing different about brass is because brass, we talked about the fit and pushing a dart straight in is difficult to do. Um, most brass breaches will have some sort of a coupler or adapter. So this one has a 9 16 receiver, 9 16 brass, glued onto the 17 30 seconds. That's just done with super glue. What we've done is measure the length we need. So about half of the dart is loaded into the tighter brass, the 17 30 seconds inside of the 9 16. So it'll sit about there. So you have half the dart loaded in to the brass. We don't want to push the whole thing in because it creates a lot of friction. And in the caliber and setup, your pusher to have the O-rings sit onto the 9 16ths will actually leave a bit of a, a problem here because you can't push straight into the 17 30 seconds. So you want to have, if you want to use the default RAM, you then again need the adapter or I call it the receiver on the barrel in order to chamber your dart. For more increased efficiency and more power, you also have the RAM which mates with the barrel. The default rams have about 0.43 inner diameter. Um, that's just the inner bore of the airflow. However, it's a pretty small hole and people have done science about this in research, but uh, the smaller the hole, you basically create a choke point for the air. The air can't push through as well. Um, so you're basically decreasing the amount of airflow that's able to go through your barrel. There's a lot of people who are very sciencey about it, who can speculate all day about it. And it's really hard to put a finite number on it because there's so many variables. 
However, people have noticed an increase in performance by changing their ramrod to a larger bore. So here is an, a metal ramrod with an aluminum ram base with a brass ram core. Similar to this one here, different base material um, just because it has more durability and it looks cool. But the ram core has a larger inner diameter for better airflow, so you have less um, restriction in your air. However, technically, there's something called dead space where that extra volume there sits behind the dart. So all the air you're pushing into it behind the dart technically gets compressed inside of this brass. And so the more volume left behind your dart in the ram creates a dead space where the air in there is just dead air. It's not helping you out. So you have more dead space, but better airflow. So it's a trade-off between less dead space and uh, less airflow. So plenty of people have speculated on what's better or not. However, in general, the ram, the brass ram core gives you better performance. However, because you're using a brass ram, it is not compatible with other barrel types and there's no o-ring either so you'd lose a benefit to that air seal so it's a trade-off again so if you have a brass barrel you can get a brass ram that mates in and you get that good air seal and you're just using the brass as a pusher pushes the dart in and loads it and you get that nice air seal between the really tight tolerances of the brass and you don't have to worry about o-rings or anything however if you like the less dead space and the vanguard dog bow notched down benefit of an aluminum ram core, you can use that still to have an air seal in your brass. The O-rings on a default ram will seal in the 916's brass, so that's an option for you. You will get a little bit decreased performance, but then you have the fast loading of the Vanguard ram core option as well. And you no longer have to spend the additional money or the extra work in making a brass ram. If you just keep your old ram, get a brass barrel to get that extra boost. However, if you want a greater boost, you can go with the all brass ram core. That's about it for barrels, and most of that's it for ram cores. We'll talk more about that later. But to show you guys real quick how to install a brass uh, barrel, if you buy a brass barrel from us, you'll get the barrel with receiver as the barrel portion, and you'll get a muzzle with the harbor needed to install it. Optionally, you can also get a ram core or ram base with it. This is a bra uh, brass ram core to be installed in a Modified RAM base. This has been bored out for 17 30 seconds RAM core because the default RAM core is one half inch. So it needs a bigger hole, but it installs the same way. It's just a press fit or a push fit. You like to apply some glue on the inside of the RAM before pressing it in to make sure the air seal is great. There's no leaking air out of this RAM. It is a nice press fit. The default RAM gets a similar air seal, but when you order a RAM, a brass barrel from us, you don't necessarily have to get a brass ram, however, we highly recommend it. You can still use a default ram in it, however, it does leak a little bit if the ram is off center. So personally, I recommend the brass ram for a much better air seal. There's like no leaking in that at all. So you get a much more consistent performance. However, if you're if you're okay with some variants, you can just get the brass barrel. So we're going to see how this fires now. I've got a K26 in it. So here we go. Time, slides open, close, perfect. So what happens is actually me adjusting the muzzle and me installing it in the plunger actually help align the brass breech. There's a little bit of friction up there. And so a really good brass breech, if it's nice and aligned and well polished, it'll slide in and you can even get it to drop and just lock in like that. Um, so here we have tools, we have a buffing wheel. You can use um, steel wool, scotch bright to polish up the brass. You can actually use brass soil, you can use micro adhesives and polishes to get your brass sliding smooth. And that is why I personally prefer not to use brass because there's longer maintenance and it does wear out over time. However, if you want top quality performance, that's what you would use. And the test air seal, plug with your finger and fire. Got a little bit of an air leak in there, but that's still pretty good. That's the K25, 18 inch barrel. And it hit about 240 FPS. Now that was just one shot. However, that's typically what you'd get. The problem though I just did, you probably just saw it, is I went to take out the magazine and I forgot it did not have a Vanguard or Ram core in it. So you have to make sure you open the breech 
like a normal blaster, insert the mag and then push it forward to load a dart. Because if you don't open the breech and you forget and you slam in a mag, you can bend your brass pretty bad and there's another broken breech. But if you have the Vanguard, no worries there. So onto the next portion of performance. So this probably hits about 250, 260 FPS as is. Now the 18 inch brass barrel is probably too long for the spring setup. A K25 does not have the same power as a K26. In fact, a K25 is about 10 to 12 kilograms. So it's even weaker than like most turf long shot springs. So this 18 inch barrel is probably too long creating too much friction. So if you want to optimize it, people always ask, what size of barrel do I need? We'll start with 18, maybe cut an inch off until you get to a sweet spot. Uh, if you don't want to do it that way though, then just go with 18 and see what you get. And if you want to go with the K26, I bet it would hit much harder with K26. It'd probably hit about 270 FPS with the K26. Now here is a little bit about springs while we're here. We've got our blaster open. We've got these spring chips. These are the default most common sizes. So a K31 spring, which is about like 4 kg. Like you can get this to fire out of a 14 inch brass barrel or 12 inch brass barrel, but it is a very weak spring. On its own, it's not very useful unless you want to hit about 90 FPS, which is about the same as a regular, you know, rival blast or nerf brand off the shelf performance level out of your, your high end caliber. Now that's great if you want to tune it down and shoot some kids, maybe some eight year olds, nine year olds, they can take it. However, as soon as you bump up to the next size, which is 788, which I forgot to grab out of a bin just now, the 788 hits a little higher. It hits about 150 FPS, which is about twice as hard as a regular Nerf blaster off the shelf. So a little older kid range, usually they say don't shoot people under the age of eight with those. Then we have a K25 which is the default. This is my go-to. It's got a wider, wider diameter than some springs, so it actually stacks nicer. The plungers have a pretty big hole in the middle, and so the wider spring won't bend and flex as much, so you get more consistent performance because the spring isn't getting in the way. It is only a 12 kilogram spring, so it's pretty light if you know about springs, and you can still get pretty much 185 to 200 feet per second performance with the default setup. That's with three printed parts, not machine parts, default RAM core, default barrel, you can still hit 185 easy. And that's your starting range. Maybe the weakest you hit is maybe 170 if you put holes in your plunger tube, but 185 to 200 and higher is the default setup that we offer. Um, because next size up, the K26 is actually 14 to 16 kilograms. So it's about five kilograms more, give or take, that's almost a third more powerful. And because of its size, it'll want to twist and bend more. These plungers are made to fit basically any spring size you have. So the K26 is a little bit too narrow. You can get a custom plunger, but then it just doesn't stack as nice. There's no spring guide. I mean, the Caliburn does have about a two inch spring guide going down the middle, but that's not enough to stop it from twisting. So you're going to get less consistent performance. And the K26, while it is a couple of kilograms heavier in its load, it doesn't give you all that much benefit in performance, especially in the talon claw, where your volume is shortened by about half. So this long spring is great in the caliber. However, because it's got more coils and thicker coils per inch, you're gonna get less prime distance. So with less volume, you can't fit as long of a spring. So a K25, while although it is weaker, you can fit a longer K25 in the same space as a K26. So you get more power because you get more total compression. There's a little bit of science behind that. I don't know any actual math. I just know that most people say K25 is the go-to. K26, you really gotta know what you're doing as far as getting the spring set right, getting a good air seal before the K26 can even come into play. Now I do have one last spring here made for the Caliburn, 11 inch K14. This is like a 24 kilogram, 22 kilogram spring. It's got beefy wires. Running this in an event will actually tire out your arm to the point where you no longer want to play. However, with this, just one spring, you can easily hit 300 FPS. Uh, not too long ago, maybe last year or two years, this was pretty popular to get the higher FPS, but then people realized, you know, if you just make a more efficient system, you don't need a beefy spring. So this spring will hit you very good performance. However, I never recommend it because it's stupid strong, 222 kilograms means if you don't have aluminum parts, you're gonna break your blaster eventually, just a matter of time. 
And the added benefit of the extra power is not really worth it because when you're shooting a Nerf dart that fast at you know 400 feet per second, it's really hard to hit anything and get consistent performance just because you're just shooting foam. You can, and I have gotten over 400 feet per second performance out of the default 527 barrel, a longer barrel with this spring, 400 plus FPS. However, it's not practical because unless you're super ripped, you're not gonna be able to use it practically. So I'm just gonna leave that out as an option or throw it out as an option. If you wanna get it, you can, but it's like a show piece. Like, oh, I can shoot one shot 400 FPS and then put it away for the day because your arm's not gonna be able to take that. Maybe you're stronger than me. I get that, I'm pretty small, but practicality wise, it's not worth it. Okay, so we have the K26 and the K30, or K25 and K31. Now I picked these up because although individually they don't have very much rating, they do stack or nest inside each other nicely. Now this is what we would recommend over the K14, by getting both of these springs, putting them inside each other, makes their prime feel lighter than 18 and a half kilograms for most people. Um, however, the total force is greater than 18.5 kilograms. So you get better performance than say a K26, but it feels lighter for some reason. It feels a little heavier than K26, but it feels lighter than like a, a long shot 18 kilogram. So if you throw this in, they stack nicely together. And if you prime it, you'll actually notice they don't interfere with each other much if at all. Look at that. They compress down nicely because the K25 keeps the K31 centered while they are. The K31 is a smaller diameter spring. It still stacks nicely. Now you hear a little bit of spring grind. The difference comes from machine parts and having adequate lubrication on them. So the machine parts help number one in the durability. A pretty basic upgrade. It increases your durability of your parts so you don't break them and it's more consistent air seal and don't wear out over time. So durability wise, you can run a really heavy spring load and you're not gonna break this aluminum ram base. If it's a printed base, you run the chances of breaking it. Same with the plunger. Uh, the machined ram parts also hold their tolerance over time. A 3D printed part, while it may not break right away, it will slowly wear away over time and you'll lose your air seal. That's just the nature of things made out of plastic and 3D printed things. Machined parts, you don't have that problem. In addition, because they're machined, um, they have higher tolerances than a 3D print. A 3D print can vary in its diameter. However, these machine parts have tolerances. We aim for about plus or minus 5,000 of an inch. So you've got higher tolerance for the O-rings, which works great with the high tolerance of the polycarbonate tubing. And so you get a better air seal. And so the machine parts are a really simple upgrade to get better performance. Not only that, also greater durability. If you're running a heavy spring load, like a K25 in a K31 or a K14, or whatever else you're running, the heavier the spring load, the more wear on your parts, so the machine parts will take the burn of that force. So we have the machine parts, which have greater tolerances because 3D printed parts can vary in their diameters. Um, they're pretty accurate, you get them tuned in, they work pretty well, however, they're just not as good as you know machining. So these are turned to about 5,000, plus or minus 5,000 tolerance, it's 5,000 of an inch. So your O-ring has a lot more consistent surface area to get that seal on and the polycarbonate tubing that we use plunger tubes also has pretty good tolerances so those things combined together really help get more consistent performance and a better air seal uh, these parts are also more durable than 3d printed parts so they will last pretty much forever um also come in white black and aluminum as machine parts the aluminum is mostly for looks and it is much stronger however the extra price may or not be worth it if you feel like it's justified. Um, the acetyl performs just as well. That's our machine parts have higher tolerances for O-rings. Now the uh, machine RAM bases are also critically important because the plastic RAM bases will wear out. They're taking the direct impact of that plunger over and over again and they can break. So you get a stronger part for the base. You get that better air seal for the O-ring. And the basic upgrade of course is the notch for o-ring on the ram tip which helps boost your fps you know it may only be 10 or 15 fps but when you add those all together with all the other parts you know 10 fps here and there multiplied by this number of parts can really help boost your performance and that's how you can get 300 fps or at the very least upper 200s the last machine part that i would highly recommend are these coupler inserts that slug has for the caliber now we have these on our site as well what these do is they reinforce the all the force 
happening in the middle here onto this pin. So it's much more durable and less likely to break the shell, the external 3D printed parts. The internal 3D printed parts, we can get machined. The external 3D parts hold the two halves of the blaster, the front and the back of the caliber and talon claw together, can still break. So this coupler insert really helps. 18 inch brass barrel, brass ram core, aluminum ram base, acetyl plunger, K25 and a K31 spring. Let's see what we got. Air seal is less than average. Our FPS, much higher than average. I think I hit the TV. Quick chronograph. 260. 286, that sounds about right. So that's an average of about 270, 280, 286. That's with this air seal. You can imagine what it would do with an actual air seal. 286 with this air seal. So the reason for not hitting 300 FPS this time is that leak, obviously. 286. Let me just fire two more, just for fun. Yeah, 260, 280. So, gotta fix that leak. And I can see that there is visible chips from the machine shop on that plunger, so the air seal is not that great. Oh, and yeah, it seized up. I told you it would. So it sounds like it's leaking from the plunger. So the machine plunger, actually, it's dry as bones in there. I don't know if it's what you want to do to get good performance is, yeah, you get a brass barrel, you get a tighter barrel and all that stuff. However, all the fancy toys and machine parts in the world is not going to help you if you don't have a good air seal, if you're not having the basic maintenance done, getting rid of your debris or your dirt in your plunger tube or on your own rings, wiping them around regularly, re-lubricating your plunger tube regularly. That's all basic stuff that you should already be doing before you can even think about getting higher FPS. So we tell people if you're just starting out, start easy, start basic, work your way up there. You get a default platform or default caliber and then get upgrade parts from there. If you just jump straight into the brass or just jump straight into a tighter barrel, you might have more issues than you thought you'd have and you'll be disappointed rather than learning as you go and learning the ins and outs of your blaster platform so you can get the exact performance you want, the way you want it, when you want it. Rather than just making you uh, making it up as you go and trying to get by what other people tell you. There's really no substitute for learning on your own. So you gotta do your basic maintenance, get the air seal right. Now your ram base can have a tighter air seal. You don't have to worry about that as much, but your plunger, you need to balance the friction and the air seal. Your plunger needs to be able to move unimpeded by friction, but also maintain that air seal. So you can wrap your ram base o-ring in Teflon tape or make it wider, do whatever you want with that, but make sure your plunger can still slide freely. And here, that is, and here's that, a little better. This guy says 265. We talked about the machine parts, and we're gonna talk about, you know, they give you more durability, more tolerance. We left off talking about the coupler inserts, which makes it indestructible for a K25, K31 double spring load or anything stronger than a normal K25. We recommend the coupler inserts very highly. They make the middle part of your blaster pretty much indestructible. I still recommend dry firing because that just helps. Now, if you wanna hit 300 to 400, a little higher, then you'll probably want to look at getting that brass barrel tuned in just right um, and getting the higher spring load. For 400 FPS and over 300, you know, 350, really a K14 is where you gotta go. You can get, you know, a 24 inch barrel, which is very long, but you can hit higher FPS with a longer barrel if you don't find it unwieldy like I do. That is an option. I didn't show it here, but up here in the corner and you see a video of an all aluminum machine caliber we built. It has a K14 24 inch just default 527 barrel with the basic 
O-rings and machine parts, and it hits 400 FPS average easy, you know, 420 and onwards. So anything between 300 and 400, you really just gotta play around with your barrel lengths and your stronger springs. But this will get you at least the upper 200s to 300s, and that's what most people consider well, or to consider high enough. I know a lot of places that do higher FPS actually limit it to 300 FPS as the upper limit. So there's a reason why you wanna stay at that limit. However, if your group doesn't have a limit and you just wanna see how high you can get, definitely, push that long barrel, push that heavy spring load, and really tweak that air seal and you'll be, you'll be in good shape.